But wait, there's more! Hosted by Fur- may contain harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. The beginning, if you're listening live and you want to join us in IRC, you can go to www.nordisoradio.com. Click on the chat button. The Java applet's going to load right there for you. Uh, all you got to do is type in your name and hit join chat. You'll be right in there with uh, all these guys. And all the listeners and the hosts and all that stuff. Lots of fun, actually. Um, you can also email the show any lore questions that you may have uh, to lore at omfg.fm. Uh, a couple other things I want to bring to your attention, but wait, those lore episodes are soon going to be available for download individually for like 50 cents a piece, I believe, is the pricing we have on it. So, um, you know. 50 cents. That's not bad. That's $2.50 for uh, five episodes. It's, you know, 10 hours. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, that'll be on the smokinggamer.com. Don't look for it quite yet. I just wanted to uh, go ahead and bring that to your attention that that is something that is coming very soon. Speaking of soon, I will be in being interviewed uh, by the Grand Old Podcast in a few weeks. Uh, this, uh, this guy basically goes out and, uh, interviews people that, uh, have podcasts and it's kind of like a wow podcast hub. Uh, so I'm going to be sitting down with him and, uh, he's going to be interviewing me. Uh, you can get in touch with Sayamora, uh, grand old podcast, Google it and all that stuff. If you want to, you know, submit some questions or anything like that. And then, uh, just before that, actually on, on the other side of the table, I'll be the interviewee and I'll be sitting down with Spherix, uh, which is a game developer who's coming out with a brand new MMO, uh, who's starting to develop a brand new MMO. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. Um, not everyone at TS Gamer Inc. agrees with me, like Snapple Monkey, but uh, regardless of that, I think it's a pretty good idea for that, that they have, uh, and uh, so we're going to sit down and talk to them about that. So with that said, I guess I'll go ahead and actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start the show since I'm not going to be there. I might as well get something in, right? So, here's what I would like to do. I would like to begin this show with a little discussion, if you will. Uh, this is actually a private message I got on www.knightsoflore.com, which is our own little lore community that you can join if you would like. Um, but I got this uh, private message from Selvagim. It says, uh, Hey Pride, love the show. Also love how you always destroy Howitzer and Dunn in Horde vs. Alliance battles for the Alliance. Uh, so my question, uh, from what I can remember, Stormwind has always been under the rule and control of some pretty temperamental warrior leaders. How do you think Anduin is going to rule Stormwind when he takes over as the leader of the Alliance, assuming that's the case? Uh, this guy personally thinks that he will be a gentler and more helpless like, or he will have a gentler and more helpless like feeling than his father just because he's a priest. Warriors make better kings than priests, in my honest opinion. Uh, thanks, and once again, I love the show. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you for sending that in, Salagim. I want to go ahead and say that I agree with you that I feel that warriors make better kings than priests, but the best best kings would probably be a paladin, uh, simply for the fact that they have kind of the best of both worlds. But regardless of that, how do I think that Anduin is going to... would Rules. I think he would he would rule it honestly a lot like his father. He may be a little less. Uh, uh, how, what should I say this? I think he would be a little less uh, gung ho, uh, maybe a little more calm, collected, and, and maybe think things through a little bit more than his father does. Uh, granted, his father Varian, of course, is getting a lot better at that, especially in this latest expansion. So you never know. Uh, I think that Anduin would do a fine job as king if it comes to that. 
Uh, hopefully he grows up and matures a little bit more in the sense of not being so naive. Like, I know that a lot of people look at Anduin and he's like, you know, anti-war and, and all this other stuff. But uh, I think as he grows older and actually understands the reason why there's a horde and the reason why there's an alliance and all this other stuff, I think that he'll make a damn good king uh, in his day. Uh, he just needs to learn a few life lessons and that uh, war is a part of life and you can't stop it and you never will. Um, and that goes for the world of Azeroth and the, the Earth as we know it. War is a, is a part of life, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. It's just not going to happen. As much as we can all hope uh, that we can all live in peace and all that good stuff, it's just not going to happen. But uh, before I get all philosophical and whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Howitzer, Dunn, and Rioris, and uh, I, I hope they will go ahead and give their thoughts uh, on this situation. So with that, guys, uh, it's been fun. Hope you enjoy the show. Hope how it's and done. Don't bore you to death. And uh, I will be back next week. What's up guys, um, okay, uh, when Pride, I, I of course am done, I'm the best of the three, um, when Pride re pre-recorded this, uh, he didn't know that, um, of course he didn't know that Howie was going to be light, uh, Howie is currently tied up in calculus class I believe, but he will be joining us, joining us as, uh, as soon as we get here, he gets here rather, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer that question as to how Anduin will be as a ruler um i i can well actually first of all pride doesn't destroy me in alliance versus horde discussions pride you see is in charge of how long we can argue a point and my method of argument is of course i'm british you i i will keep arguing it doesn't matter if you're wrong uh, I, or i'm wrong i will just keep going until you give up and if pride's like no no we don't have time i can't do that so uh yeah but on to uh, onto the matter at hand and Anduin's rule. Uh, I don't know. Um, priests, priests can heal. Priests can heal. Priests can lead as well. Uh, they can heal the hearts of their followers. Uh, there's plenty of real world and like fantasy based uh, material that can suggest that uh, a priest can heal. Can heal. Why do I keep going to heal? Can lead just as well as. Uh, as a warrior type king or any any other type of role each everyone has their own strengths and yeah priests are good just look at our uh, vatican city it's run by the pope uh, there's plenty of examples in um in like various fantasy type thing i can't think of a single example of one uh, fancy setting that is ruled by a, a priesthood at the moment but I'm sure there is one and actually yeah there is a good point here raised in the IRC that uh, the night elves are led by a priest and they've got well they've uh, they've gone on fine for 10,000 years uh, but yeah yeah um, I'm just trying to think what Howie would say in this situation uh, first, I feel how he would call Anduin a bitch. And, um, yeah, I think Anduin, if, if he makes it out alive, and I'm sure he will, uh, he'll, he's definitely, we feel he definitely has some significance in 5.2. So, uh, he's at least alive for that. I don't know. I don't know at all. Uh, Okay, that done. That would have been a great question to put at the end, but Bride said, "Oh, we got to do it at the do it at the start." So, um, we're gonna completely disconnect from Stormwind, the throne of Stormwind, and today I am going to talk about 
I'm going to talk about legendary items, and I'm going to do this for a very particular reason. I saw a, um, a game debate today about legendary items, and someone was mad that the gems, anyone can get the gems and it's not legendary. And the point was made that legendary items in WoW have nothing to do with the rareness of the item as attainable by the player. It's more about the story behind that particular item. Oh, sorry, I'm still still a little bit ill, but um, yeah, I want to talk about legendaries. Uh, and some of well, some of the legendaries, some of probably the more recent legendaries than uh, other ones, as there is more information on them. <coughs> okay, uh, I guess let's. Let's just go, actually, fuck it, let's just go straight to the beginning. We're going to talk about the first legendary item very briefly that was in the game, that was meant to be attainable in the game, sorry, uh, which would be Sulphurous Hand of Ragnaros. It was, it was, he's my, I, I mean, I've got, it's an item that was forged. I don't know, actually, I wasn't really around in vanilla, so, uh, but I'm sure, if I recall correctly, and if the IRC was around in vanilla or has researched or maybe farmed for Sulphurus, you can uh, correct me. But didn't you have to forge that, like, find drops or something in the dungeon and then you combined it? Silence from the IRC. Anyway, that particular item was, of course, linked to to uh my good friend Ragnaros. the next item a uh, legendary item and like in-game legendary item we're not going to talk about quadlar and the ashbringer at this particular point is uh was what was it called wind fury blessed blade of the blessed blade of the thunder something or other it, it's that one that gets linked <laughs> <clears throat> all the time in the trades and that guy uh, that sword was if I recall correctly Ragnaros and Alakir were having a dispute as the uh, as the dispute had a dispute as the elementals do that's kind of their thing they just fought all the time and I believe it was Ragnaros anyway thinking yes yes Ragnaros and ultimately it ended up with Alec one of Alec's chosen sons being slain and bound to a sword so okay there we go thank you Blaze. yes that's what I was getting at as I said I was not a vanilla player so I've, I've read up on these things but they didn't really stick because I didn't do it I've I tend to avoid the uh, level 60 raids personally because I just don't see the the fun in it, just steamrolling through it. And now, because of popular demand, I'll get to uh, Atiash in a second, I'm going to talk about the Ashbringer. Because um, IRC will not let me not talk about the Ashbringer. All I can see is Ashbringer, 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 talk about the Ashbringer. Then if you don't talk about the Ashbringer because the corrupted one is epic, I'll shank someone. And I don't want that on my uh, conscience, so I'm going to talk about the Ashbringer. The Ashbringer was first... Uh, Ashbringer the man slayed a walk... A walk? An orc warlock, sorry. During the Second War, the warlock held a shadow crystal. And he was channeling his power through that crystal. Ashbringer the man... A more grain. I cannot remember his first name for the life of me, and we spoke about him last week or the week before, something like that. But uh, Darius, uh, not Darius. What was his last name? More grain. More grain. Uh, grabbed the crystal. He's like, I'm sure this is a powerful artifact. If it could be bent towards the light, and of course, he picked it up barehanded. He had a withered hand. It all got kind of gross. So it was uh, taken to the. Silver, not the Silver Hammer, and they had a council about it. And they they decided all to channel 
their paladin powers into the crystal and that act purified it. The crystal since then has been linked to the Naru because it sort of follows the Naru life cycle and that sort of makes sense if an orc had it because the whole Draenei thing that we've also done to death recently. Uh... So anyway, this, uh, this Naru crystal thing was taken to a Marad Moradin, possibly. He was taken to a dwarf, and uh, the Ashbringer. He's like, "Can you make me a sword?" And of course, Arthas had just killed, or killed that uh, that dwarf. Voice in my ear. Can I get a name check, please? Never mind. Never mind, I see he's beat you to it, voice in my ear. <clears throat> so he took he took the crystal to Magni, thank you, I see. And Magni was like, Well, I will I will forge it into a blade, and then there was a part about how his hatred for Arthas was poured into the blade and dwarves, when they hate something they make super awesome blades. And there we have it. That sword then, of course, ended up getting corrupted, which was a boring, a boring, boring story. And then it killed everyone. One second, please, Rioris, please shut up. I don't care. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, people. But our producer is complaining about his pork ribs not arriving. <coughs> I'm moving on from the Ashbringer. I'm moving on from the, I'm sorry, I cannot keep like my head where it's meant to be when our producer is a uh, He's fine enough. It's a boring story to me and I've got actual legendary items that I've got to talk about. I'm sorry. I don't play a two handed like weapon user. I have no interest in the Ashbringer whatsoever. I will never, even if it was added into the game now, I could never use it, so I don't really care. The next one, Atiesh though, Atiesh, Atiesh, that is one, Atiesh, that is one that I could use, and if that was added back into the game, I would be very happy. Unfortunately, we don't know how, we don't know when it was made, but we do know that it was forge from the seed of hate what exactly the seed of hate was i haven't got a clue i have no idea there's i'm i'm looking for it now actually information on the seed of hate and there is absolutely nothing of course the most significant part of the uh of the thing above the seat uh, the obvious part of the there Deep breath, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, the most obvious thing about the staff is that it was wielded by the Guardians of Tears Fall. It was handed down and used by each Guardian until the end of the line with Medivh. Following the assassination of Medivh, the staff was brought to Dalaran because that's what the Kirin Tor used to do. They used to grab shit that didn't belong to them because it was magical and they deemed themselves Guardians of magic sort of like the blue flight, but not dragons uh, But the staff was broken when Archimonde destroyed Dalaran as a precaution because Well, it was pretty badass stuff for one. It was used in opening the dark portal and other significant Dark magics as well as like obviously light magics the avatar of Sargaris was killed by Medivh's uh, mother, who of course used the stuff, and Howie has finally joined us. Howie is turning his microphone on. Howie will be joining us very shortly. Anyway, so the staff was broken up when uh, Archimonde destroyed Dalaran and the Scourge captured 41 of its pieces 
Uh, 40 of the pieces were entrusted to Kalthazard within Max Ramus. Kalth and... Yeah, there's pieces all over the place. That Some pieces were held by... Uh, well, it was held by Brand Bronzebeard, and somehow Cthun, Cthun rather got his hands on it. Uh, there's there's just bits of this stuff all over the place. Like Tarsis, someone called Tarsis held some. I don't. I I personally don't know who that is. Anyway, law wise, law wise, uh, Meryl Winterstorm and Garona half Orkan go on a super secret mission to retrieve the base of the shattered stuff from the remains of C'Thun. Somewhere along the lines the pieces were obviously caught like captured from Kel'Thuzad but it is not actually mentioned in the lore at the moment and this great stuff was reforged and given to Madan. Hooray! He, actually, he held the base of the stuff and restored the whole stuff just by doing it because he's Madan. But of course, in the game, we would build it and we could rock out in like classic Max 40 and use it to teleport to Karazan. Okay, that's Atiesh. I don't even know. I don't even know. Now, let's move on in the game and talk about a weapon, or a pair of weapons rather, that I'm sure. Everyone is going to be overly fond of. Dare I call him an overrated character? I better not. I better not. So of course we're talking about Shadow Morn. No, um, no, talking about the uh, the twin glaives of twin blades of what? As enough. And the Twin Blades of Azinoth, we assume, were taken from Azinoth by Illidan. I'm not actually sure when this event happens in the Alter Timeline, because there was no mention of a Azinoth during the uh, the whole Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey incident, where uh, Ronin and Krasus went back in time. But we assume that Azinoth was one of the demons that Illidan killed in that altered Timeline took the weapons and he sort of rocked out with them since the point he captured them all the way up to the Black Temple and that's as as badass as Illidan is the actual weapon the actual lore behind the weapon is somewhat lacking I'm afraid uh, we don't know who Asnoth is I've heard I've read rather a uh, multiple sources of what sort of demon Azanoth is and we don't know I could at this point use uh, the opportunity to talk about Illidan a bit more but Pride's not here I'm not that into him so uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna skip Illidan we don't know much about his uh, about his swords dives rather so we will move on to possibly one of the more I don't care for the next legendary item that was acquired, the uh, the bow. It was off the top of my head. Fel Fel Felderin? Not right. It's it's the bow from Stormwell, which I'm sure was badass back in TBC. What did, did I say the sun? It is somewhere. But yeah, back in the Stormwell. I remember the Stormwell. I remember the Stormwell, guys. Uh, I'm sure the boat itself was quite badass, just because you didn't have to use... You didn't have to use ammunition for it. Uh, for Thoradel. The Stars... The Stars Fury? Thoradel, the Stars Fury. You didn't have to use ammo, so I'm sure it was pretty badass. And I think, like, lore-wise, it was shooting Sunwell power. Uh, people all over people in the face which I'm sure was awesome but now all bows do that so 
I don't know. I, I feel with that one, it was sort of pushed into the game because hunters wanted something. But of course, it's a legendary item, so the legendary part of that weapon, I did like quotation marks with my hands that I'm sure you can't use, can't see. And if you could see, I'd be a little bit worried. Uh, is just because it is harnessing the power of the sun. Well. Uh, I think we're going to go on a break. After break, we of course have the mace from Ulduar. That's quite interesting just because it is. We've got everyone's favorite Shadow Morn. And then through Catter and onto the present day. What The present day is really what I wanted to talk about. So uh, I'm just going to sort of race through the rest. So I'll catch you guys after the break. Hi, go. Hi guys, uh, and we're back this time. Re this time, how it's up back. is here. How it's up, we're just operating under the assumption that we are. I didn't see it change at the. I didn't see the change thing on the chat to say that now we're playing. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, Howie, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing mathematical because I just got back from calculus. Okay, well, before we get back into Legendaries, uh, we started the show off today with a pre-recorded pre uh, message from Pride. Pretty much the gist of that was, a fan loves it when Pride beats us in Alliance versus Horde Offs, and how you feel the view of how Anduin's going to do as a roller compared to his father when the time comes. So if you'd like to share your opinion on that real quick, and then we'll get back to it. Um, okay, so here's my opinion. I think that they... This, I don't think I've ever told you about. I just thought of it actually this morning. They're building Anduin so up in this expansion that I wouldn't be surprised if he takes an early leadership role like within the next expansion or two, and we see Varian uh, go away somehow. I think he's going to be a good leader, and I think he's like... It's kind of like how we're getting rid of Garage. I think also Varian's going to leave. So I think we're going to... Maybe not this expansion, but the next one. Well, first of all... Nowhere does it say... That we're getting rid of Garage. For having a raid against him? If you're just lucky I didn't say kill. I've okay. even bended to your it, will and said get rid of... It doesn't say that we kill Garage. I know it doesn't, which is how come I said get rid of... It says we, we, we're we going to defeat Garrosh. This could be in a peaceful, uh, you know, those ritualistic fights to the death. You know how Garrosh killed, uh, what's his name? That Tauren that everyone likes. Karen? That's the one. Not a big fan. I'm not going to lie. But uh, you know how, like, in Thrall's time, those were peaceful fights. I'm calling it now Last Raid. One of them. Peaceful fight, not to the death. No, it. it's gonna. Be, it's, I'm not, I don't know about him dying, but he is going to go away from the war chief position. Oh, and how about the bit about Pride uh, beating us in alliance versus Horde offs? See, only an alliance member would think that because the alliance <laughs> believe that alliance is the best. Horde sucks is a valid argument, and they are all in the exception that if they just spam that long enough, we'll eventually give in. Well, um, I recall, I, I can't remember what episode it was, but uh, I think uh, an episode I remember doing was um, Pride's main argument was just superior intellect. And I remember when the archive hit YouTube, uh, an Alliance player was like, dude, that's not a good argument. And uh, <laughs> he may not have been an Alliance player, I'm just adding that for effect. But uh now, people like the host that they like, and like I'm sure people who like me, I could say some like complete and utter nonsense, and because they're a fan of me, Rurus, no one likes you. Okay, everyone likes. That was me. actually proven. That was proven that no one likes Rurus. Um. Uh, yeah, like I could say some utter nonsense, and like a fan of mine be they a fan of like just the way. Because we, we're all characters, really. We present ourselves a certain way online. A lot of the times, the way that we present ourselves is the same way that we will present ourselves in a face-to-face -face meeting, but not always the case. But uh, I think people are obviously a fan of their faction, 
and then a fan of a host who amuses that fan and anything that that host says they they're going to think that that was that was good but pride doesn't really beat us yeah. anyway 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 back to uh back to the legendary items uh i'm not going to talk about quadalal because i didn't want to talk about ashbringer and you guys made me talk about ashbringer and I didn't want to do it. So uh, I'm not going to talk about Guadalajara either. So there. But I am going to talk about okay. Valinir, the Hammer of the Ancient Kings. Uh, game because there's a lot of focus and attention and time to get the right. Wait, and so, so oh, are you talking about legendary items from the game or from like all of... The from books? the game. From the game. Yeah, no, okay, no. I don't know anything about them because I don't try. Am I not in the IRC? Uh, they can send howitzer questions. Oh yeah, from from this point onwards, if you've already sent me a question, I've still got the window open, but apparently my IRC is timed out. So uh, if you haven't sent me a question, actually just resend all questions to howitzer, so that way we we know that we've got them. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we are just talking about legendary items from the games, because if we talk about all the legendary items, there's there's so many weapons that like significant lore characters have like used and they're not just like like there's a uh, Varian's Varian's belt at the moment it belonged to uh, Lothar and that's a very significant item but we can't attain it in the game so I'm, I'm not going to talk about it because there's just so many things and we we don't have the time okay, okay. so where do you like to go from well, here well we just got to Wrath I'm going to I'm going to go through Wrath Real quick, uh, Valonir, it was created by the Titans themselves and given to the first Earthen King, Urel Stoneheart. And with it, he 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 brought life to his race. He, he was the first Earthen, and yeah, he, he helped to create and give life to the rest of his brethren. And it was broken in the first war between the Earthen and Iron Dwarves. That is, that is all I know. That is all I know. Hey, that's impressive. It would be impressive, but it sounds like it was read like right off like Wikipedia. Was it not? I read it on Wikipedia earlier in the break. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, hey, um, Kim, you're trying, and you know things more than I'm sure most people know. So, apart from them healers. God. Uh, but you you know a little bit about Shadow Morn, so do you want to take the lead on Shadow Morn, and I will I will pipe him with. You heard my Shadow description Morn. of Shadow Morn like five minutes ago. Yeah, I did, but it's... the IRC didn't. But uh, I... oh, I didn't know it was shareable. I didn't know it was that impressive that it should be shared. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so in no way is this lore significant, but this is my understanding of Shadow Morn. I went into ICC and they're like, hey. We totally can build this epic weapon, but we need you to gather ingredients so we can build it. One of the ingredients that I remember is Arthas's hammer, which I had to go find. And this is my first complaint with it. If we're using the base, we're using the base of it, right, as a mace. How did it turn into a two-handed axe? Tell me, Dunn, how did that work? Uh, because, uh, because one of the other ingredients was primordial saranite. Fresh so? from Yogg Saran himself. Why didn't we? Did, why did we need the stupid mace? Uh, I, I, my understanding is like they just sort of s melted down the primordial saranite and then just slapped it on the mace, and then made it an axe. Yeah. So basically, you took Yogg Saran blood rock with mace with blood from other. I, you get the blood from like the lieutenants, right? Uh, I think you need one other thing. Yeah, there, some... yeah, there is a there, there there was a step I believe where you had to gather. Yeah, blood. some blood. And then there's but I then think there, one there, more. There, there, there were the essences as well because there was the essence of blood yes. that you had to get from uh from the three uh like basically wing leaders. 
it makes you put all this stuff together, you know, you make it and then you get shot one or two handed. Uh, legendary axe, which could be used by, you know, the people like these two handed axes. And that's basically it. I, there was no corruption deal with it. It was just this axe that had Shadow and Morn's name, which, by the way, sounds a lot darker than Frost Morn. You think if any one of those was cursed, it would be Shadow Morn. And then there you go. Deal over. That, that was and pretty much it. Um,. I like how this, the idea of this axe when you start the uh, quest line is sold to you like uh, there is a weapon that can defeat the, the Lich King and we must attain it. The only problem is it hasn't, it hasn't been made yet. Yeah. Also, apparently there is a short story that won a Blizzard writing contest that explains quite a bit about Shadowmorn. But, you know, that was a contest that I didn't notice or pay attention to. And I, uh, it wasn't kind of written. If it wasn't written by Blizzard, I uh, can't consider it canon, so... Well, I, I think Sorry, we can assume guys. if Blizzard, like, posted it, Blizzard could easily canonize it, but I'm usually quite Blizzard good posts at... Blizzard a lot uh, of things. I'm usually quite good at keeping track with the uh, short stories and stuff, because I really like them, and I read them at work. But um, I I have not seen that. Yeah, so I'm going to stick with if it's not written by Blizzard or confirmed by Blizzard, then... Too bad, not canon. So, Tyranor, you can stop posting me about that. Uh, however, Tyranor, if you want to post me a link to that short story, I will certainly like to read that for my own enjoyment. Benefit. Yeah. Um, well, that that sort of wraps up, Raph. Um, as I said, I really want to talk about uh, uh, here in Miss Pandaria, so I'm trying to get through these now. Uh, now, there was the cast stuff. Taragos's Rest... Uh, Dragonrath Tower Ghost is rest in uh, the Firelands. And I did this one because I can use stuff. And I never finished it because I think I was like the third in line to do it. And I, it's about half done. And I can't bear to bring my, take myself to Firelands again to do it. But um, basically, Dragonrath. It's, it's all like a bronze dragon, blue dragon craziness. Uh, you, The bronze dragons prophesize that Ragnaros is going to kill everyone. But there is, there is a character, there is a man wielding a staff who can event, like prevent this fiery Armageddon. So you go, and it turns out it's you. You're like, hooray. So, uh... You go on a task, and first you've got to construct an item that will allow you to... Oh, what does that item do? I've done this. I've done this quest. I haven't, so you're not getting any help from me. <laughs> well, anyway, you build this item. It allows you to see... It's, it's an eye. Does it... I does it show you something in time? Does it show you the truth? Uh, I think it's something to do with time because it involves uh, the sands of time. You make it with the sands of time. But uh, And then you make this eye. So you, you make this eye and you take it to uh, Calderer. And this is where uh, the blue dragon, Taragos, is like, what are you doing here? You're not meant to be here. And you say, hey, I'm on a mission. I've got I've to gotta do this. So you go into the Nexus to take the eye to that point where the anomaly was. And you take it there and, oh no, there's Twilight Drakes all over the place. And ultimately, you learn that um, the, uh, what's his name, Azagos is in league with uh, Deathwing. And that is not oh, good. Shit. One second. I apologize, I use a wireless headset, and that's all well and good. It gives me great mobility around the room, but when the battery starts dying, I need to take the headset off my head and plug in a charger. Otherwise, I lose my uh, microphone and headset, which isn't good. Um, anyway, so you get Terragosa on board, and you... Uh... You get her on board, you go back to Calicos. He's like, oh no, my fears are... My fears are... Con confirmed go get a branch you need to get a branch from nordrasil 
That is the that's the only thing that will help. Once it, I'm trying to get over this as quickly as I can because all the cool lore stuff happens at the end. Uh, so you go. How get do you know I can make it faster? Skip right to the end. Yes. Well, it, it, the cool stuff starts happening. So you you've got the branch. I may have, okay. at some point in this. I think it's after the branch. Okay. But Tarek goes so sacrifices herself to save you from Aragos oh, as it goes her. and Caligos is like oh no we must uh, what we will do we will bind her spirit to you so that she can she can live for a short time through you but you are going to need to gather uh, powerful fire burning souls or burning essences or something from the in the Firelands, you must go back to the Firelands, go into the Realm of Fire, go to Ragnaros's uh, realm, and siphon off their souls to uh, t to feed the magic that's binding the uh, Taragosa to yourself to keep her alive. And then you go do that. You gather them. Uh, Taragosa sort of like in my head, this is happening over a short period of time because her essence is like fading away expand to you and you strengthen that with the uh, with the burning essences and then Calic Ghost is like well as a ghost cannot become the blue aspect because of course this is when that was happening so uh, I will disguise you as Taragosa and you must vote for uh, not, not as a ghost I will run against him and that is how Calic Ghost became the aspect of magic after this, he's like, okay, so you've got the all-seeing guy, and you've got the branch, and they've fashioned it into a staff, so that it's something that you can actually use, and you're not just carrying crap around with you. Now go kill Ragnaros, and take his heart, and I will take Taragosa and put her in the heart, and there she can, like, the power of the heart will keep her essence alive forever within the staff, and it will empower the staff. You become great friends. And that was that. So basically, uh, Taragosa, uh, the Dragon's Wrath. Dragon Wrath, Taragosa's Rest was like a crypt or tomb or something for this blue drake, uh, Taragosa, and it was pretty badass. Howie, do you know much about the, uh, the daggers? Hmm. The daggers. Like law wise. I know that a dagger is the name of a weapon that is small, a small version of a sword. I can tell you the lore of swords, how they got fashioned into daggers. But I do not know the lore of those daggers specifically. Well, I also do not know the lore because uh, I found in the World of Warcraft that rogues are a, uh, a secretive bunch that keep to themselves. I, I, I don't know much about it. So let's go to Mr. Pandaria. Yeah, let's skip straight to Mr. Pandaria. The good stuff, the stuff that I know. The stuff that you know. Okay, so Miss of Pandaria. I'm, I've already done all the vanilla and thingy. Yeah, I think the, just, just so we say something about it. Uh... Basically, Rathian gives you the quest chain to kill his father and gives you daggers as a tool to do them. Do so. That was pretty much Fangs of the Father. It is... I, I, weren't the daggers at some point at the end of the quest chain made with bits of Deathwing? Because possibly his fangs? Yeah, you needed to uh, kill Death Deathwing. I know, I know uh, like... Because our, our rogue was quite slow. Uh, doing his uh, quest chain. I think we got the Fangs of the Father two weeks before we stopped riding because uh, Diablo 3 came out. And, um, yeah, after that, he never came back. But uh, 5.1, uh, not 5.1, 5.0, how he takes us away. I've already done vanilla and TBC. And most of Wrath to an extent. You're not going to get away with that saying something, so... Okay. Thanks, <clears> 5.0. 
when you first meet Rathian, who is the uh, responsible party for the legendary items in Mrs. Pandaria, you're but a wee, wee 86 or 87. And he says, come back to me when you're 90, because you are not even close enough to be staring at my face. And we're like, okay, bye. And we come back at 90. And Rathian's there, and he's like, you and I will become friends for the benefit of the world. And we will first need sigils of power and wisdom from the raid bosses in Mogushan Vaults, Hearts of Fear, and, and Terrace of Endless Springs. Springs. I forgot the... Yes, thank you for reminding me, Done. And then let's say we go gather these items, these sigils of power and wisdom, and we go back and we say we hear... Rathian. Oh, I also forgot the part where you become best friends because you're honored with them by killing Mogu and shit. And you're like, here, Rathian, we have get delivered you these sigils of power and wisdom. And he's like, yes, but this is not enough, or we must capture fear itself. So you must go kill the Shah of Fear in the Terrace of Endless Springs and bring me the Chimera of Fear. At this point, I like, would like to add that many have tried to get the chi the Chimera of Fear. Rathian's like, many have tried, but no one has come out quite the same. Or alive. So uh, he, he totally did not think he'd do it. Yeah, but we did. And so did everyone else in my raid group that was on the quest. And everyone else <laughs> that has that quest. This is 100% drop rate. And he bring these items to him. And he's like, oh, yes, you have done quite well. Now here, meet me at the Mason Peak. I believe that's right. I have no clue. Uh, Mason's Peak. Uh, hey, oh, wow. At top I remember. of the stairs to nowhere. Top the stairs to nowhere. We will fa I will fasten this legendary piece for you. And you can't see it, but I'm making hand movements to fashion things. And so you go there, and he's like, yes, and you see him. It's actually a pretty cool scene where he takes the Chimera of Fear, and he puts all the sigils and stuff, essences on it, and he makes you this pretty gem that you may put in a shot-touched weapon. And he's like, yes, we are done for now, but believe me, there will be times ahead where I will require your help again. And that brings us to 5.1, where we currently are. Where you currently are. Oh, I'm sorry, are you in 5.2, Dan? I've got I've got the quest, the Thunder King. Are you in 5.2? I've, I've finished that. No, the answer is no, you're not in 5.2. <laughs> I'm in 5.2. So, I'm, I'm on the PTR, bro. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> 5.1. And he's like, hello again! We have many things ahead of us, but yet we are still not that close of friends, so you must go become revered with Rathian. Which, you know, you can do by killing Alliance members, or the opposite faction, let's say, if you're Alliance, but let's face it, no one is that's gotten that far. And you have to go kill the opposite faction in the, what you might call it, Cressering Wilds, and those new daily. And once you've hit revered with him, you're like, yes, we're even greater friends than before. I can show you my secrets on how to become even more powerful with these other legendary pieces. So then what he asks you to do, the part that I have stopped at and the part that I am going very slowly and done prides himself on completing just the other day, is collecting oh, yeah. five, six thousand valor points. Six thousand by the way the weekly cap is a thousand so even if you did it every single day and got the cap it would still take you a month and a half to complete this quest uh and i was I'd like, like i'd like to point out the uh the law significance of this is you are being helpful to the like because obviously the war has come to pandaria so you are being uh a being uh you you would be helpful to the pandarans whose like land you're pretty much destroying with war and uh, that that is the law significance of this. Like, yes, he tells you to go be helpful. Stupid ass grind. And okay, so although we will not finish the story, we'll get. I'll just get to the next point. Uh, after completing your six thousand valor points, he asks you to stick it to the alliance and defeat them in the two new battlegrounds. And so I mean that was pretty like you just go and you kill alliance and i guess there's is it, i guess the lore significance of those two battlegrounds is the lore significance of why he asks you to do those things 
which I suppose I need to answer because you haven't seen it. No, I have not. So uh, you may. Oh, when, when are we going to break? Are we going to break in like 30 seconds? Okay. Okay. So okay, I, I think we can finish just... I, th I think we can just about finish 5.2. 5.1 rather for uh, before we have to go and break um, the significance between the battlegrounds is Rathian is obviously Rathian is telling us I'm for the horde and I'm sure he's telling you alliance people like other things but uh, basically the theory at the moment is Rathian understands that the horde and, like Azeroth divided will not stand up to the Burning Legions, because that I think we've all agreed that that is what he's on about. However, um, he's also aware that they can't. The the two will never, as it is now, the two will never like form a truce, like a long-lasting truce that that is required to win this epic battle with the Legion. So, um, <clears throat> the theory is. Rathian, I think, is purposely playing both sides against each other. And his intent is to... He's trying to figure out which faction is stronger, is the more dominant faction in itself. And then he will support that faction. And then with that faction, he is uh, he's going to beat the other faction down to a point where they've got to surrender to the dominant faction, which of course is the Horde, and uh, yeah, I think that's just like a case of Horde hero, go show your metal against the Alliance and prove that you should be the one that I don't wipe out. This is of course his theory and there's nothing that says this for real, okay, but that's, that's pretty much the gist I got from it when I did it. And on that point, we've very almost finished with 5.1, but we gotta go and break. So we'll wrap that up real quick after the break. Okay, welcome back to the final hour of the show. I want to say final third. 50 minutes. 50 minutes, yeah. It's not a third. It, well, it is technically a third. Not in like a mathematical sense, but like there's three. We have two breaks. Well, it's a third for me because I got here at the 30 minute mark. Okay, I guess that's true. Any, oh, we have three breaks. What? Oh, okay. Anyway, anyway, back to where I was. So, so you go win the, the battlegrounds, and uh, your final task that Rathian gives you is a. Uh, he's like, okay, so the Alliance, and I guess the Horde have bases in Krasarang World, and you got to go kill them go kill him dead so the horde are sent well no the alliance sent on a quest to kill uh uh commander blood health or warlord blood health i forget his official title because i didn't actually have to interact with him at all but he is the orc who uh, you may remember from the southern barons Oh, me? No. I don't remember anything. Well, he was the one uh, who attacked the, the dwarf base in Southern Barrens. That was all. Our producer remembers that dude. And his counterpart, the guy that we had to go kill, uh, we did it before a raid, was uh, a man by the name of High Marshal Twinbraid, who he is, he's the counterpart. He's also in, from Southern Barrens. And to his left, there's a note saying, oh, there's very few times when you can serve your leader and get revenge at the same time, but this is one of them. I've been put in charge of the Alliance offensive here on Pandaria, and the the Horde have put a Blood Hilt in charge, and he was responsible for the death of my son, because uh, apparently we kill him when, I think, when we bomb the place, because I distinctively remember doing that. But, um... But yeah, we we go kill him, and that is because Rathian told me to weaken the alliance, the alliance's foothold on Pandari. So I went and did it, and I'm sure the alliance people went and did it as well because I hate those horde. But after that, there's two very different cutscenes. 
as I understand it. Uh, for the Alliance, I I am led to believe that uh, Rathian talks about Varian a bit. As I, Varian's so good for the Alliance, but for the Horde, we get a cool cutscene which will actually be up on the Smoking Gamer soon. I've got it. I recorded it. And uh, it was pretty cool. Where Rathian's like, I want to talk about the soul of the Horde. What is the Horde and what do they stand for? And then, like, you get... He displays, like, images of everyone, all the leaders of the Horde. And there's, like, a spotlight. He's like, I believe the Horde, the soul of the Horde, and then pausing on the spotlight, is you! And then I'm in the spotlight. So I will now answer to Dunn, the soul of the Horde. Oh, does that mean that uh, the player will be World Chief? Does that mean what? Sorry. Still... Yeah, we're all War Chief now. I, I, which maybe maybe the Horde is going with a more political. Maybe maybe we'll have a president, the War President. <laughs> Changes into a democracy. Yeah. Could be. I don't know. Basically, I'm the soul of the Horde. And uh, that's it. After that, he was like. I, I received a quest called the Thunder King and it says wait for the Tyler Two Princes or the Two Princes or whatever in well, 5.2 like and that that is where we are at the moment from what I've, I, I have looked we are waiting I've looked into the matter a little bit and I've read I think it might be the first quest or like after the get exalted with Rathian quest which I'm sure will come but uh, it says the Thunder King had great power, forged an empire, uh, forged an empire with fear and hatred. But he also had power and splendor. Uh, he's long dead. We should use the power for ourselves. Go get Mogu relics and uh, Trillium bars. I have a plan, and that's it. Really, that's all. I, that's all I know at this point. And I'm sure there'll be loads of awesome lore revealed soon i i haven't seen any like data mine spoilers and even if i even if they do get released because i don't think they have at the moment i'm going to avoid them because i quite like these rathian things and i kind of want them to be a spoiler no no not a spoiler i kind of want them to be like a surprise the opposite of a spoiler so um i think that is we briefly spoke about all obtainable legendary items in the world of warcraft and a little bit about the lore behind those items of course there's like other things like there was well sarah and quabdlar and kalthus's sword the kalthus's father's sword and asterian sword which we sure that kalthus i think kalthus took with him to tempest keep and it is the twin blade of the phoenix king or whatever that sword was called and that is uh Veldrin. And like there, there's loads, and I don't we don't have the time or the will to go through it. So um, yeah, right. Unless Howie has anything else he would like to add, we're onto uh onto the question part of the show. Oh, then yes, 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 yes. Is that yes? You have something else to add, or yes, we go into questions. Um, I have this to add. The in a previous cutscene that I forgot to talk about in five point one, he brings up all of the uh, you know not he doesn't bring up all of them but he shows it talks about the past and present of the horde. And at one point he brings up Sylvanas and talks about the future of the horde. So didn't, didn't, we, didn't we talk about that on a show? Yeah, but you know it's part of the legendary quest, so you know I got to include that again. Okay. Cover all the bases. I would okay, like so. just, just, mm, right, I'd just like to point out, Howie, that Sylvanas is a dead chick. And that is all. Well, what's your definition of dead? She's kind of dead. Is she, though? Or is she undead, meaning not dead? I don't think... I don't think a jury of your peers would 
see the difference between the two. Oh, you'd be surprised. Maybe I will be the American legal system. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Questions? Enough, like, thinly go. veiled, like, jabs at how it's a furry's fictional necrophilia. Let's move on to questions. Okay, this one's coming in from Tiranor. My question for the show is, what's your favorite type of undead? Ghouls, abominations, etc. Forsaken, not included. So I guess that was probably directed at me. Uh, Sylvanas, she's a banshee. I like that. She's not Forsaken. She's a Banshee. Is that your favorite? Banshees? No. Uh, I like ghouls. No, I like... What were those things that had the sacks on the heads? Geists. I like geists. I, I just think they look cool. They look cool as hell. And... Uh, it, they, they, I don't know. They, they, they saw, they're sort of darker than the other undead. Because they sort of remind me of Silent Hill. See, I like my favorite is definitely the um, what are they called? The liches. I like the liches. Not KT specifically, but just all of the liches. Can you name any? Can you name any other liches? Yes. Um. Lady Frost thing. In Skullamans. Oh, I thought you were going to go for Lady Death Whisper in ICC. And Lady Death Whisper in ICC. Uh, I mean, there's there's a couple. There used to be one in. Uh, I'm not sure if the, he if he's there anymore. But there used to be one in that. Uh, in the Pig People dungeon. Pig People. Yeah, the Pig People. Razor Fen Depths, I think it was. There was a, a Lich boss. Oh. Yeah, there, there are many Liches. And I, I, mine uh, mine was named Ras Frost Whisper. So there. I could. Okay. I still like Geists. I mean, Frost yeah. Worms and like, the, the Magma Worms were cool. Oh, and Razor Friend Downs is the pig place. I should have already said that. Oh, we did. Okay. Okay, anyway, I guess. Next question. I feel questions are going to take less time than they normally do because, like, there's less people answering them. Uh, okay, if you promise to be on your best behavior, Rioris will be joining us. Hello? I don't know if that's working. Do you remember what happened last time? There was, there was okay. shouting involved, that's what I remember. Okay, next question. In Chapter 13 of the Dark Portal, what is that... What is that the Naru talking to Turian when he is meditating? This was sent by Vandalia in 1998. Yes. I don't know. I, I didn't play Warcraft. I well then. <laughs> Wait, one sec. <laughs> One sec, when you say chapter... Are we talking the book, the Dark Portal? It's the book. Oh, okay, because... Okay, um... Wait, chapter 14. Chapter... Talking to who? 13. Talking to chapter who? Chapter 13. And he's talking to... Turian? Oh, that was my least favourite chapter. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember. I haven't... I, I didn't care for that book as much as some of the others. Uh, I might have read it. I, I like remember. the bit when, uh, with the Ara Arakoa that was guiding them through Draenor, that bit was cool. But, uh, that, it's very much an Alliance story, and I'm very much a Horde player. Like, I mean, Howie's got, like, high-level Alliance players, but I don't believe in them. So, I do have a high-level. Um, I don't know. Could be. Could be anyone. It could just be... The light, and when I, I, I know the light's not like a person, but like maybe like his conscience or something like that. It could be anything without rereading it. I, I don't know. Okay, well, moving on to a different question. This one comes from Wozer, Wo, Wozors. 
I have a question. Some episodes ago, you guys talked about Broxigar, but you guys said that he went into the land where the Burning Legion lives and not been heard of. But what if he is taking one of these time traveler thingies that they took to get there back to the future? And the Bronze Dragonfly know this, but haven't told us, and he is arriving soon. So like I just fucked him up. Ain't no Bronze Dragonfly. Or the time, him. or the time is way different in that dimension. It's just a couple of minutes when he came back in the future. Well, it's not it another dimension. It had been ten thousand years or something. Sorry for my <laughs> English if it's bad. Ha. Huh? It's not another dimension though. It's just another planet. Yeah. Well. Uh, it could be. It could be argued that it is another dimension. Yeah. It could also be argued that the time that it took the portal itself is like traveling between planets, which would be slower time than if you're on the planet, which time Why is different relative to what problems. planet you're on. <laughs> Basically, it brings a whole bunch of metaphysics into this on how time works. But that can that give didn't you a rough affect estimate. any other demons. Well, you don't. We don't know if it did. Can you tell me how old that demon is? How old is a demon, Rioris? Um, how old is... How old is Kill Jaden? 17. Patch 19, 17. And so he's miraculously got all big and tough at the age of 17, or was there yeah. time travel involved? Time travel was involved. No, I mean, no, of course, no, this I is don't... always like what... This, this is what us Horde players want to hear about. This is what we like to believe in. This is what we dream at night. That, uh, you know, Brock Cigar will magically come back to the powers of wow, tiny, wimey, wibbly, wobbly things that they're just like, okay, he's back now. Um, well, I mean, even even if Brock Cigar himself, and yes, I know he was speared by Sargaris, but Brock Cigar was pretty badass. If anyone's going to take a good old spear, and it's, it's good old Brox. Brox the Red. Yeah. Okay, but even if he's not coming back, could we not say that he's... That, that he lives on through his magical axe, which is now with his niece, Thura. No, that's bullshit. He's not in the axe. Uh, no, I didn't say... Oh, no, 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 I'm no. Not saying, I'm not saying he's physically in the axe. Don't I'm give me any spiritual bullshit either. I'm saying, that, I'm saying that the axe is... No. Shut up, Rioris. No. I, I, I'm already regretting my decision to let you... <laughs> yeah, I... you can't stop me. <laughs> I, I know I can't stop you, but I can yell at you. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not even I'm not even sure if uh, if IRC can hear you. Actually, so uh, IRC, if, can you hear me? If it seems like I'm having a mental break, doesn't matter. It's Next okay. question <laughs> from Igor Han. Igor Han, do you think that the Ashbringer would do any damage on Sargeras more than any other thing, or Wait, what, any sorry? other kind of weapon? Would the Ashbringer do more damage or any damage on Sargeras compared to any other weapon? Uh. I see the thing. Okay, didn't they prove it. that the light doesn't help? I think it wouldn't because it's not more. It's mortally forged. It's made by Magni. And wasn't the whole yeah, but... thing? Wasn't the whole thing that Sargeras couldn't be hired by mortally forged weapons? Yeah, which is how come only Gorhal could. Gorhal? Gorhal. Not Gorhal, whatever it's called. I, did, I don't think wooden he had Wooden axe that made. It's just, it's just wooden axe. It had a name. Oh, you did give it a name? I know it has a name, and I know it's close to that. It's. I mean, Gorhal is Garrosh's axe, so... I know it's Gor Garrosh's axe, but I know, it's a, I know it definitely has a name. But whatever, it's... Because it was made by Scenarius that it was able to do damage. Even though it only did like a minute amount of damage. So I would say no. I'm I'm sure it has a name. Like I, I remember. It does not look like it. It just seems to be the magical axe created by Scenarius. Well, even if it, it didn't have a, have oh, a name. The axe of Scenarius. There we go. Okay, there you have it. I think Thuri gave it a name in a. Uh... In that one, uh, that 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 book where she was in. I know it has a name. Everyone else can just you know go away. But going on to the next question, we're all are we all saying no for that. Uh, I see. If the light, I uh, 
if the light was so powerful, like if I mean, we agree that the Ashbringer's power comes from the fact that it's got a Naru crystal in it, yeah. 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 Well, if the Naru could do that, why do they need to build an army of light to be the Burning Legion? Because it doesn't. Because it would only do as much damage as the actual scenario, and that was just a scratch. Can't kill someone with scratches. It would do less damage than the Axis Scenarius. Yeah, it's not what it's what he forged, yeah. Um Maybe if they took the power of the crystal and the Ashbringer, combined it with the Axe of Scenarius, that would hurt. So no. Next question. <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, but the Ashbring is just not that great. It's not. <laughs> Dog one sent this. By the way, I haven't read any of these in advance. Dog one, alright. So, when I was running around on my Blood Elf today, I started to ponder something. Kael'thas has been portrayed like a walking joke in the Blizzard community just because of their setback line, he says. But think about it, he almost summoned Kill Jaden. So, so my question is, what do you really think about Kael'thas? Could he be classified as one of the more dangerous villains in WoW, or is he just a walking joke? I think that these jokes were just a setback. I see what you see. Uh, I see what you see there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, he's cool and all. I like Kalthus. Yeah. He's I mean, obviously, I... Well, we don't know that yet. Maybe Lord the Market's all badass. Oh, Lord the a bitch. Don't even try. Are you going to defend him, Don? You Mr. Blood Elf? What? Kalthus? No, Lord the No, he just was... Just oh, Lord Okay, Lord is a badass. Okay. <laughs> okay, this isn't what the question is. I don't want to derail. No, no, no. you called in no, the question no, Lord Mar, no, so he has the right to no. defend him. Lord the no, okay. only been known as derailing of topics. No. Take it back. Take it back. I don't take it back, but we're not going into this. Yeah, we are. No. You're not the boss of me. No. You don't know my life. I can shut you up. Well, go ahead. Okay. Try me. See if okay. I care. I can just who's gonna little... who's who's gonna get in trouble about that? Me or you? When Pride listens back to the show. Does Pride even listen to these? Yeah, because he edits them, doesn't he? No, I edit them. Well, in that case... I am by myself now. What? No, you're with yours, and maybe me, who knows. Anyway, the point I'm getting is, Lothamar is a badass. Kalthus is a pretty cool dude. Um, I think people take his only a setback joke. Like, yeah, it was funny, but, like... That's because his plans were set back. I think what the question's getting at is, because he was almost responsible for summoning Kill Jaden, does that make him like one of the most badass villains we've ever seen, just because he was so close to destroying all of Azeroth? Nah, because people do that quite often. It seems to be. Think about Azeroth, it. Azeroth, as far as the history goes, the we've had Kill Jaden, uh, we've had Sargeras nearly be summoned by Ashara. Who summoned Archimund? Uh, uh, Kalthazard. Kalthazard summoned Archimund, and then... Kel'thas um, failed to summon Kill Jaden, and we don't consider um, Kel'thas ad that dangerous. So, meh. Kel'th the guy's cool, but uh, yeah. One sec. We don't consider Kel'thas are dangerous. Okay, we we fucked him up in Lax. Yeah, but he's still not dead. Uh, didn't we take? Wait, what happened to the flat tree? Nothing. <laughs> we never Nothing. touched it. it was never, never mentioned in a. Thinker. Uh, fair enough. Okay, so he's still technically alive somewhere. Okay, well. But still. I mean, those things, things that actually affected the world. Or Deathwing obviously affected the world. In a negative way. Um, KT and the Scourge. But if we we're just considering World of Warcraft doings, then. Yeah, I would say um, Ka Kael'thas is the only one who almost really destroyed the world other than Deathwing. 
but World of Warcraft's like not the important bit. Warcraft in general is the important bit. You can't just limit it to World of Warcraft. Okay, then in that case, Archimond was here and he didn't do shit. So you know, whoever no, summoned him pussy. didn't get. No, no, no. no. So, Archimond's I mean... the pussy. That's the discussion between Killjade and Archimond. That's not what we're talking about here. We well, no, might go into that. that. We might go into that later. Okay. Well, let's we'll go into do it now. And kill. Um... Uh, I will, ag I will cool. agree. I will agree that Kill Jaden is definitely the, the, the more dangerous of the two uh, when when we're comparing them to Archimond. Yeah. Uh, Kalthus is a pretty cool guy. Uh, I mean, he, he he's not taken seriously because his initial plan, which had all the mana in like Tempest Keep, didn't work. We we stopped that, but it was only a setback because he went on to almost summon. What's his name? Kill Jaden. Yeah, the name's sort of blurring into one now. Um, so, like, and people take that one line too serious, I think. And I think it does steal away from Kalthus' uh, Or not badass. serious enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah of course I don't. Do we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so uh, more questions after the break, I guess. Oh, shit, yeah, the break. Um, okay, we'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to your boy, this Lord Done Talk. Uh, I'm not the one with the questions, bro. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm the one with the questions. <laughs> How are we going to Pokemon Talk? What are you talking about? I'm not on Pokemon. I'm looking at the questions that I had to save. Sure. Okay, this is by A11. Why does Barisa dislike Sylvanas? What did Sylvanas do to make her mad? And if Valeria should come back, will she love and accept Sylvanas as her sister? Or will she be weird like Barisa? Woman's a banshee queen. Ain't no one gonna forgive that. Isn't Valeria... No. Okay, no, wait. Larry comes back, I think she would be accepting of her sister. Or no. I don't think she'd hate her as much as Varisa does. Okay. Are you uh, about the one that went off with what's-his-face? The power okay, dude. Okay, Varisa was the wife of Ronin. Mm -hmm. uh, Illyria yeah. is the one that went off with that guy that Pride likes, who I also think is a bit overrated. Is that Trillian? That's the one. Yes. Uh, I don't really recall Varisa saying that she dislikes Sylvanas. But she's a crazy undead lady who's raising the dead. Well, know, basically, really, like, I think really her, sit well with them. her duty would tell her to, like, that she's bad, but I feel like deep down she would still consider her, like, her sister, and that she will love her no matter what. I think as of, it was either Day of the Dragon or Night of the Dragon is the only instance I have seen Varisa uh, refer to Sylvanas at all. And the general vibe that I got from that was like more of a pity thing, but like also a shame thing. Like, like <laughs> she, she, she obviously knows that her sister is like the Dark B Banshee Queen. And she doesn't really communicate that with anyone, but I still think that she like sort of feels sorry for or pities like her sister because of what happened to her, because it wasn't a secret that this wasn't something that Sylvanas chose. Uh, as for Illyria, I I don't know anything about her really. She didn't like orcs, and then she's in love, and then she went missing. Which is another that's, paladin. So I'm guessing pretty... she'd take on some of his ideals. So I think that she wouldn't like the undead. And I just think that the fact that Sylvanas is now undead and she's willingly undead because she had the chance to die. No, you know, well, no, 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 not quite the same. No. I just don't think they get on. And yes, uh, Tyranor, who is my main man, has, because uh, this, this man is insane, reciting all the cutscenes before he goes to bed. Uh, in, Night of, 
here's here's like the summary in uh, Night of the Dragon. Varisa is he's still protective of Sylvanas. When because there uh, was it their brother? I think it was their brother says something about Sylvanas and Varisa gets mad. I could I could be wrong about who's saying it, but a man by the name of Zenderin insults Sylvanas and Varisa's like, "Yo, don't talk about my sister like that." So yeah. That's a thing. Okay. And Ali, I, I imagine the sisterhood bond would uh, would still be quite close, even if it's like sort of awkward because of the situation. Um, I'd, I'd like to point out in the Purge of Dalaran, it, it sort of displays cousin. Zenderin is Varisa's cousin. There we go. In a, but in the Fall of Dalaran, Varisa, she sort of... Her actions are very Sylvana-esque. Especially when... Like when she's like, go kill the shopkeepers. And that scribe, he's a... He needs to go. And the, and the Blood Elf Magister that wants to withdraw his gold from the bank before he leaves Dalaran. Kill that dude. Kill that dude dead. So, um... I don't think they're that different. It's just one is a high elf and the other is a banshee. A banshee bit. This <laughs> is a banshee. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next question. Let's do that. Let's do two, two, two. It was not really a question. Okay, here's one. I've been reading the forums at nightsoflore.com and was wondering the lore reasons we went to Dire Mall and Halls of Origination. Those are two very precise dungeons that have nothing to do with one another. Yes. I, I mean, I, Let I mean, me see I, what the forum is. Uh, I, think, I think I might have also received that question. Uh, they're no, I did not get that one. Um, oh, it's about the it's the type people talking about specific dungeons and lore. Oh, is it from it? that thread. Think... That really long one. Um, I think Diamol. That's controlled by the fa a faction of ogres, which is at war with another faction of ogres that's allied with the Horde. And because the Horde do it, the Alliance do it. I think uh, that's why. That may factor into it, but uh. Diamol is also where those elves, night elves, hung out. Wasn't it also a gladiatorial arena at some point? Yeah, that's that's uh, Diamol is actually where Varian fought as a gladiator. Uh, a lot of stuff happens at Diamol. So we got ghost night elves who are up to no good. Uh, there's a lot of uh, warlock lore back in the old, uh, back in vanilla, and but before they took away class quests, that's where you got your uh, dread steed. So there's a lot of demons around there, which might have something to do with the night elves still using arcane magic. Um, there's the ogres. So let let's say the horde's link is through the ogres because we do have ogres on the horde. And the, those ogres do, or at least did have a presence in that zone. I, f I forget the name of the zone. Feralus. Feralus, thank you. Uh, but for the night elves, that used to be night elf land. So there is some significance to die more there. And also in post Casa, Shogal was there. Yeah, and that's. No one likes Shogal. True. Uh, as for Halls of Origination, that is where, when we fight Algalon, uh, and he's like, well, we're going to, when he's going to like destroy the planet so that that could start again, the weapon that would do that was in the Halls of Origination. That is where the super weapon was that would wipe also, all life Bran from the planet. Bran was in there, right? Bran's everywhere. But Bran, I think Bran would have liked you to... Rip it open and take a look. It's like um, 
like Halls of Stone. I think it's the wrong. Yeah, no, Halls of Stone. Bran, Bran, Bran was in. In a uh, yeah. of. In, uh, I think Bran would have just wanted you to go in there and take a look around. He he likes to get you to do that. He does, but the fact that there was a Titan super weapon that Deathwing yeah, that's part two. Deathwing might have got hold of, or the Twilight Cultist might have got hold of, was I think the major motivation. I I'd prefer to go in there to help out the Orson Dwarf. Nah, yeah. dwarves. Okay. Well, I have another question. Well, uh, I'm just trying to think. Is a uh, yeah. Whenever you're ready. Is there something else I wanted to say about either of those dungeons? Sort of on the tip of my tongue. No, forget it. Go ahead. Okay. This one's from Kenny Powers. What would the former at dragon aspect, you know, Ale Alex Raza, Ysera, Caligos, Nazdormu, think of all the crazy shenanigans that Rathian is up to? Do you think that they would... Would you like to see them confront Rathian in a later patch? I'm going to stay out this one because I don't know what he's doing. Um... Um... Do you think that the dragon aspects would get... Would want like revenge or anything on Rathian? Well, Rathian hasn't done anything to them. Mm -hmm. And actually, but he's still Rath a representative of the black of the black dragonflight. Yeah, but Rathian is a product of red dragonflight meddling. Why well, Rathian is not a fan of the red dragonflight? I nope. I'm not. Sh so, uh, I don't know. But actually, apart from like. Would they be upset that he was instigating war between the Horde and Alliance? I don't think they would actually, because they've sort of like the uh, the uh, the Age of Dragons is over. The like, apart from Caligos, who's currently banging Jaina, uh, I, the dragons are pretty much disconnecting from the world at this point. But wouldn't they want <laughs> Rathian to go with them with the disconnection? Uh, it's not their place to say. He's, I mean, Rathian, for all intent and purposes, is the head of the Black Dragon Flight. Uh, he wasn't involved in Dragon Soul whatsoever. So, who knows? Talking about Dragon Flights and Black Dragon Flights, because uh, this happened yesterday. And it really annoyed me, and it's it's a, it's a funny little story. Um, one of the mages in my raid has like a trivia uh, add-on, and she'll run this like in like five-minute breaks, and while we're waiting for summons and stuff. And we usually run the uh, we usually run the law like question pack, and I think it was yesterday. The question came up: What color were the Black Dragon Flight before they became corrupted? And everyone's like black, and it said no right answers. Uh, after like the time it timed out, it said no right answer given. Correct answer was brown. And me and Adrud Hill, who goes by the name of Nourish or Alex, depending who you ask, uh, are both like completely outraged. How he was there saying, "Is that right?" And yeah, that it, it was. Never, I only say it, it was always black, and yeah. but we were talking about dragon flights uh, last mm -hmm. week. The same add-on asked, uh, said, uh, "Brexit is half orc and half was," and people are like typing Draenei, and I come in with ogre, and it didn't come up, and I was like, "Did I spell it wrong?" So I tried ogre with a different spelling. And it didn't come up. And then it said no correct answer given. The correct answer was demon and add-ons, man. So don't add get that add-on. <laughs> yeah, d avoid that. Um, I project like I've been tasked by this mage. She was like, write a, a law trivia pack, and I will use that trivia pack. And I'm actually debating it. So I'd actually we'll talk about that on Knights of Law. Get the forums uh, to do it. Get on the forums because I think it'd be cool to have like a Knights of Law 
trivia packs so other people can, as a community, educate other people about the law because there's still people who play this game who have absolutely no interest but would like to use like these like trivia add-ons because it fills time when like you're waiting for someone on an AFK or something but uh yeah that's that tangent uh in in the answer of your actual question regarding uh the dragonflights and rathium there's a book coming out uh in February, I'm told, which is called Dawn of the Aspects, and that's going to talk about dragons. So maybe we'll learn the answer then. It's not long well, to go now. It was Dawn of the Aspects. You think that would be in the past, wouldn't it? It, it, it? it could be in the past, but that's not to say it won't also address current day issues. Yeah. Okay, well, that was the last question. Uh, I've got one that I, I don't know why I've got it and not you, but uh, I have one. This is from Selvagem, Selvagem, I'm not quite sure how you say that, but uh, do you think oh. Blizzard, have you got this I one? I do oh, I'm reading one. it now. <clears throat> do you think that Blizzard will ever do anything with the Druids of the pack again? I would really like to see more of them and see them finally pulled out of the Emerald Dream. Which was pack again? Pack was Wolf. Wolf. No. Um, well, how? If it was going to happen in any, hmm? what? Your your alliance is a Worgen, isn't it? So. Yeah, Worgen Druid. What about it? Uh, I, well, just if anyone <laughs> knows, about? if anyone knows, you'd know. Oh, I see. Um, well, I think if they were going to do anything like that, it wouldn't just happen. I just killed my system. <coughs> okay, I think if they were going to do anything with them, they would have done it in Cataclysm when we were really focused on the Druids and somewhat touched the Emerald Dream. And since they didn't do it, I don't see us going back um, into it. I don't see them going back into the Emerald Dream unless that was its own separate expansion. Like, not its own separate expansion, but a different patch, which I don't see that ever coming up again. I think as long as Mafia runs around, he ain't gonna let them back. Well, they have. And, it. A, and a big war against all the denominations of Druids would be pretty cool, hmm? I would say no, because Druid on Druid fighting is the most boring thing in the world. Just look at a PvP, but it's really boring, so no, it wouldn't. Got none of them Druids. Um, yeah, that wraps it up. Unless we have anything extra to say. Yeah, if, if anyone, if anyone has additional questions or commentary, it's t that's great commentary. Okay, so I think we're gonna end it early here, guys. Not that much early. I think we're off by like seven minutes of what we normally do. More like nine. Okay, so why don't you uh, wrap us up, then? Uh. That's us for this week, guys. Um, remember, you can join us on Knights of Law. We should definitely do that, like, law add on pack, like, trivia thing. Uh, we should do that. I'm not sure how we will do that, but as a community, we should do that because I think that'd be cool. Um, and then, what else? Uh, Knights of Law, YouTube channel, Facebook. That's uh, facebook.com forward slash TSGamer. I think. Uh, yeah. A Nook. I'm still getting followed on a Nook. I made a status on a Nook today. Did you? Twitter, Pride1G. Yeah. Twitter, Pride1G, yeah. Uh, I'm Church of Dunn. Not that I use it. Uh, Howie is the real Howitzer. Not that I use it. <laughs> and I'm Stop. Snapple Monkey. And he's, Sna Snapple. he's Snapple Monkey. Uh, Snapple, um, you are still planning the Mass Effect thing, yeah? Yep, uh, I was posting it on Monday, my first Mass Effect play, story playthrough. Okay, okay, yeah, that's on Snapple's channel. Uh, but you still didn't. Are you still doing the law thing? Pride was under the impression that you were still doing the Mass Effect well, law thing. No, because I lost all the episodes in an okay. accident. 
In an accident, okay. In an accident, in air quotes. Accident. Okay. Well then. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's Yay! It. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, one second, oh. one second. www.printonblack.co.uk uh, The, uh, do you even question is going up soon. Basically, the only thing that is delaying that is I'd, I would like the guy who won the shirt to get his shirt first. And when he's confirmed that that has arrived, it's going up on the store. Uh... Unless it arrives before the snow starts here, because if I put it up on the store, I'm still snowed in. And then, like, loads of people are like, oh, my God, i got to have this shirt, and I can't do it because I can't go to get the shirts from the supplier if I need to, then that's not good. So, yeah. Okay, thank you for watching. We will see you next time.